To conduct a thorough stability analysis, we need to define the effective lengths. That will be the focus of this video. The various options for steel design can be accessed in the data navigator under the new entry types for steel design. Within the section, you can allocate effective lengths and other pertinent properties to the structural model. According to the equivalent member method, we must define effective lengths. In this method, the members of a structure are considered individually, necessitating the consideration of effective lengths to account for buckling properties. For the design, we're only going to focus on the inner beams of our structure and the outer corner columns as well. So let's start by selecting all of our inner beams and double clicking on them to edit them. In the beginning of this video series, we checked on the steel design add-on, which you can find under the base data. With this add-on checked on, you can see by default, the design properties are checked on for each member, which will add in the design property tabs at the top. We wanna go under design types. This is where we can define our first effective lengths. Using the yellow star button here, we can create our first effective length definition. This is where we will set the determination type, the elastic critical moment. We will set to according to chapter F. And lastly, in this tab for the modification factor, we will set this automatically according to chapter F section 1-1. In the nodal supports and effective lengths tab, this is where we will check on intermediate nodes since our beams have intermediate supports feeding into them. And this is where we can use the select member or member set graphically button and choose our beams graphically so that RFM can automatically determine the number of intermediate nodes by clicking the respective member on the structural analysis model. Then using the button in the bottom left hand corner of the bitmap, we can turn on a view of the members from the RFM model itself. And we can then assign the effective lengths to the gable girders by visualizing where intermediate supports frame into the beam. You can now see that we have our start and end nodes here with a fully fixed definition for the local Z and Y directions and about the local X axes of our members. For this first node, you can see that this node is simply just the definition node for our tapers, so we can ignore this one. You can see the second node here we will set so that the Y direction is fully fixed and the vertical Z direction is released as well, as well as about the local X axis. And this will be the same for our second node here as well. In some cases, effective length factors can be entered manually under the effective length factors section. If you would like to enter the absolute values and completely ignore the above nodal supports table, you can check on this absolute values option here to do so. So now we have finished defining our effective lengths for our four inner beams here. So we can click OK. And now you can see that bitmap visualized and updated down here at the bottom. We will also go through the rest of the design properties tabs here at the top. So under the design configuration tab is further options for steel design to be customized based on strength and serviceability configurations. Here you can create multiple definitions as well as edit them. And the last tab is where you can create design supports at the member start or end. If this tab is left untouched, then the program will assume that the member is simply supported. And if your member is a cantilever, you will have to 
create a support at the starter end for that to be taken into effect for the serviceability design. Then we would also like to do the same workflow for our columns here on the corners. So we will hold control and select all of them and then edit them. So now we will go under the design types and create a new effective length definition. Again, this will be according to chapter F and the modification factor will be set to automatic. Under nodal supports and effective lengths, we want to check on intermediate nodes and then graphically select one of our columns. We can then again, turn on the bitmap and we can see that we have members framing it into the middle here. And so our effective lengths will be fixed in the local X and Y directions. And we can click OK and click OK again and leave the rest of the tabs set to default. Now that we have assigned all of the desired steel design properties, we can move on to the design in the next video. And that's when we will dive into entering the input data necessary to run the design calculation. So stay tuned for more insights and until next time, happy modeling.